All right, welcome back. You're still watching Why in the Morning right here. I'm Brian Salkwa, and as always, you can interact with us on that hashtag, uh, Why in the Morning. You can find us at Y244 channel on Instagram, Facebook, and on Twitter as well. And you can check me out personally at uh, Brian Salkwa 101. The hashtag is Why in the Morning, and Instagram is Y244 underscore channel. Now, in this segment, uh, we're going to talk about matters, uh, politics, as well as youth and leadership. So. Uh, be ready for an amazing conversation and uh, I've been joined in studio live by two uh, powerful gentlemen uh, on my immediate right he's uh, Henry Muchangi you're a youth leader as well and many other things you tell us about that as well and then we're also being joined by Emmanuel Fever who's also a youth leader and many other things that he does but first of all good morning to you good morning Mr. welcome Sir. to why in the morning thank you all right. Uh, let me start off with uh, uh, Manu. Uh, you can briefly tell us what you do, what you're passionate about, matters youth, etc., and what else you're known for before we get to matters politics. Right. Thank you so much, uh, Brian, for having me today. My name is Emmanuel Favor, just like you said. I'm a youth leader, founded at Kingdom Network, uh, which is a youthful organization that focuses at reaching to young people, especially in high schools and colleges. And what we focus on majorly is uh, mentorship, because we believe in uh, empowerment and just you know relaying whatever we have known over time to the young people that are coming up, because mm -hmm. the future of this, uh, not even Kenya alone, the future of the world is in the youth. So right. we believe in empowerment, and uh, that's what we do. Uh, of course, uh, professionally, accounting is my field, but I love people. I am passionate about people. Okay. So my interactions are majorly with people. Okay. Thank Fantastic. you. Thank uh -huh. you. What about you, Henry? Okay. My name is Henry Muchanki Moriyuki. I'm the president, current president of Catholic University of Eastern Africa. Okay. I'm glad to be here. Basically what I do, I represent students in the Koyaso office after elections, of, of course, which are always robust. And uh, being a conference leader, is my passion. I'm enthusiastic about youth and leadership. Right. And more importantly, I like also mentoring young people into becoming leaders because nowadays, in this 21st century, the leadership of activism is long, to, is long gone. It is past us. Okay. We now need leadership of negotiation, leadership that is well rounded. All right. Thank you. And, and, and speaking of that, uh, let me start with you, uh, the first question. In terms of ensuring uh, this e equity, in terms of resources, opportunities, and uh, like you mentioned, activism as well, do you feel like uh, young people have enough opportunities? Um, I remember there's a story of, uh, uh, it was in the newspaper, so there's this young man who was auditioning a job uh, against like, I don't know, it was like a huge, it was a huge crowd of people and they ended up picking like uh, 10 people and they left him out and he had the right qualifications. And recently we saw on social media, there's a young man who posted, he had a whole banner, he has a master's, like two degrees, but then he has not found a job yet. In terms of opportunities, do you feel like there are enough for young men, especially who are just out of campus, or let's say, uh, training institutions? Okay, thank you for that question, Mr. Sakwa. One, they say that opportunities come to those that are strategically positioned to acquire those opportunities. I must admit that currently we have a problem in the job market. Okay. We are producing a huge bulk of students, graduates, and then the government, I think it is not fully playing its role in also providing those opportunities. Yes, opportunities are rare, and now it is upon the aggressive youths, it's upon the youths now to be aggressive and to actually posi position themselves strategically to tap the opportunities that are available. It right. is unfortunate that we are here, but right. I believe with the new change in the education system, with the CBC, um, students will be produced to be aligned exactly to the opportunities that right. are well available for the youths in the country today. All right, I'd like you to answer the same question as well. Do you feel like uh, there's enough opportunities for young people? 
even as well in Gava today. Okay. Because <laughs> because uh, I love that this this Gava is, yeah. is 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 young is <laughs> is young people driven. Yeah. Uh, the current government systems yeah. they are all about you know empowering the young people. Yeah. We saw they have the hustlers fund. They want young people to borrow money from it. Uh, go start businesses as well. I uh, remember when CS Sports, uh, Babu Namamba, he's just started an initiative that is going to promote talent even when it comes to matters, film and many others, including sports as well, which is actually the main docket. Well, um, I would say, well, I would want to echo uh, something that uh, my good friend said, that opportunities come to them that are prepared and strategically positioned. How be it, I think there are a few things we need to navigate. Uh, as I was doing my term paper for uh, my coursework, um, there are a few things I realized, and which are very true, that um, our education system is good, but really does not prepare us for the job market. It's more of uh, knowledge, you know, you're just getting knowledge and all that, but the applicability bit is very minimal. And so even as we study and as we encourage our young people to be strategically positioned and all that, we also need to um, speak to them and, and teach them and let them know that it's important also to uh, bridge that gap between the knowledge that you're gaining in class and the requirements of the job market. Because there's a very big, you know, there's a very big gap. And that's why most of the organizations will actually take someone in based on their qualifications and then they will take them through a training so they can actually acquire the skills. So, right. of course, with the new system, education system, we're believing that now there will be a little of that gap being breached that, uh, you know, people uh, being trained on how they can be hands-on in the job market, how they can be able to navigate through storms and tough times like this and all that. Okay. Uh, but, but I think there has to be also that change of mindset, even among young people, that even as you're in school, you're studying, because we have seen, I, I believe you've seen that a lot, over the streets, people going around with banners, you know, saying, I, I, I studied these, I did these and the other, and there are no jobs. Right. Well, the jobs are there because after those guys do that, we see them having numerous, you know, opportunities and all that. That means right. opportunities are there, just means that we, we need to kind of, uh, drift the way we've been perceiving uh, things, opportunities and all that, strategically position ourselves for exactly what we have been wired to do. Right. Yeah. So I, th I think that, that, that mismatch is what we need to address more. All right. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll also like to hear from both of you, from where you sit, mm -hmm. uh, before we get to what's shaping political spheres, mm -hmm. from where you sit, uh, what do you think uh, contributes to, you know, this huge gap when it comes to uh, uh, taking up of opportunities. Is it because young people are not as enthusiastic and as passionate as they should be? Mm -hmm. uh, there's somebody who has mentioned, I was watching actually a program way back on CNN, they have this nini called African Voices Change Makers that mm -hmm. talks about young people who are innovative mm -hmm. and they're using technology to actually create opportunities. Mm -hmm. And there's someone who mentioned that, you know, for us as Africans, mm -hmm. we come from a culture <laughs> or a system where we are told, mm -hmm. uh, go to school, graduate, mm -hmm. go get a job, mm -hmm. get employed, mm -hmm. and, and start making money. But then uh, some kids in China and Japan, they are told, get to, uh, get to uh, kindergarten, mm -hmm. start learning how to make a car battery, innovate a car, create opportunities, mm -hmm. and invite other people to you know, be in your opportunity. So how can we change that? And I'd, I'd like to hear from where both of right. you all said, uh, what is the hit and what is the miss? Um. <coughs> I'm trying, I'm trying to evaluate where they start, the rain started beating us. And I'm looking way back from um, 80s when the implementation of 844 system came on board. And honestly speaking, the 844 system has mainly been focusing on theoretical aspects, neglecting the practical area and STEM subjects such as sciences and mathematics, despite the fact that we have uh, them included in the system, they are at the periphery, they are not at the core. So I think for us to prepare our youths and our children to be effective in this new world system where technology is taking shape, we really need to invest on practical learning. And I think that's why I would like to, to, to applaud the, the, the move by the government to actually implement the new CBC system, despite their haunts. Because people are, had been obsessed with getting A's, getting university grants. 
Yes, of course it is good because at times it gives you some status quo. But again, job market, opportunities. If we all prepare for white collar jobs, which are very few, then we are flooded here as it is at the moment. That's, that's where the problem is. But if we prepare our people psychologically to work, you know, there's also another problem whereby our young people have not been wired to work. Enthus enthusiasm, just as you're putting it. Young people are not zealous. They, they are just waiting for white collar jobs, connections, and so on. But at the moment, the government introduces and embraces fully the CBC system alongside making it hybrid because you cannot er eradicate the entire theoretical aspect of learning. I think that's a point. We are going to get it right. Okay. That now our young people will get opportunities. Our young people will be able to align themselves even to their potentialities and actually be fruitful to this nation and to the entire world. All right. Yes, Manu. Thank you. I think um, I would say, uh, just like I earlier on said, there has to be a shift of our mindsets, especially of young people. Right. Uh, my brother just said that we, we should not just study waiting to get employed. Right. If we are able to change that kind of a narrative, that kind of a mindset, it right. will really help us in no small way. Because, you see, if all of us are studying to get employed, that means we have a lot of competition. That's why today you hear that there's a firm, for example, doing recruitment, and you see thousands of, 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 of young people, yet they are looking for maybe two or three people. Yeah. Why? Because our mindset is we are waiting to be employed. So there has to be that shift because, um, Brian, right now we have uh, roughly 8 billion people in the world. That represents there are 8 billion problems that need to be solved. Yeah. How about that young people would consider it that there's something I can do. And for me, because I am, I, I am, I am I'm more focused on being a strategist. You know, okay. it's good to be strategic. You, you can identify there are certain problems within, uh, you know, farms, within even, you know, the rural areas. Because most of us, you know, we leave the rural areas, we come to the towns, and we're looking for employment there. Yet we are leaving opportunities on the other side. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's very imperative that we are very strategic in nature, identify problems, and then sit down with ourselves, try to navigate through solutions. That way we are even engaging ourselves. Because right. not everybody is wired to be, you know, to sit in an office or, and all that. And right. those that are wired to actually, uh, you know, identify problems, solve them, you know, uh, navigate through other problems that have been solved and better them. That's how, uh, you know, even the, the stories of the greats have been. You know, okay. people invented something, then they, other people came after them, found that they could do it better. I believe that that should still be what is uh, driving young people today. All right, uh, let me come back to you, Henry. Yes. Uh, the mindset encompasses just graduate, okay, Maliza Kujanik Party job. Mm -hmm. uh, but like you mentioned, a few people have that ideology of I want to finish and start my own company. Mm -hmm. A few, actually, mm -hmm. a few. If you, if you take a look at what research says, everybody wants to graduate and go and get a job somewhere else. How can we drive this sense into young people's minds and tell them, yes, in as much as you're studying for journalism or you're studying for ICT or you're doing engineering, architecture, and the rest of the, you know, amazing courses, think of an alternative just in case, you know, you hit a dead spot. My alternative is I'm going to start you know, a tech company online and uh, I'm going to invent a system where if I have to look for funding, maybe even in Gavel, maybe I can find a sponsor or someone who believes in me, this will actually even create opportunities for other people as well. Okay. Speaking of um, self employment as much as people want to graduate and they want those white collar jobs and so on, there's that brain, there's that cocoon of students or rather graduates who have identified their potentialities, who have actually rose up to the occasion and are becoming very innovative. I have seen students coming up with websites. I've seen students, even at the campus level. Uh, for example, um, let me give an example of where uh, one young man who is really flourishing. Uh, he just started a company just the other day, even before his third year, um, uh, called Easy House. And that is solving problems to even the students within the campuses. Um, for example, to, uh, to get accommodation, easy accommodation. You know, it is a menace. It is a problem in our campuses. Right. So 
there is that bridge. Story and of help, which I saw yesterday, was also making you know headlines. Comrades are not. Wanasema kuna kuinama, like you have to miss lunch <laughs> <Let me laughs> and eat you. supper. Mm. <laughs> tell us. We have many challenges in campus. Right. So, mm. because of those challenges, there are students who have risen up to the occasion right. to become the problem solvers to such problems. Kuinama menans, mm -hmm. accommodation accommodation menans. Mm. Students are coming up with brilliant ideas, but now the problem is the government support. Students don't have financial capabilities, so. In most cases, they come for help. They, they actually go seeking their members of uh, help from their members of parliament, from their leaders. So, just a little boost of capital, and they will be able to actualize their visions. You see, so I think we need to challenge our leaders and even the government at the at the, sa at the same time to really come in for young people. You know, they have only been using young people during the campaign periods, and after the campaigns, they just disappear. Right. You see? So we really need also to, as young people, to unite and call off the politicians who always use us, who want to use us during the campaigns and then run away. Because we have young people who are very, very much talented. I've seen talents in Catholic University of Eastern Africa. Yesterday, our Miss Square just won a famous one title. Miss Global right. World, Kenya, and she is going to represent us in Vietnam. If the government and the institutions did not give her the, the, the platforms, because even at the same time, as much as we are talking about innovation and coming up, being creative, we right. also need platforms. Right. These platforms are in such institutions as government, parastatals, and so on and so forth. So right. I think we also need to provide platforms to our young people so that they exhibit their talents and they're able to tap and use their talents and their uh, innovation to be problem solvers, not um, um, perennial Depend on handout. Mm. <laughs> yes. Because usually yeah. it's like, uh, just lend me 50,000, I start a business. And like you mentioned, uh, is it because you come from a place of desperation, you know? that we, we are not really supported by our backgrounds because if you compare even the richest people, they inherit wealth. They say, in fact, they, they say wealth is created and then it's inherited. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Right. I, I think, uh, Brian, one thing we have to appreciate is that tough times make really strong people. Right. Uh, and the vice versa is also true. Uh, right. Tough times like now, you know, the economic turbulence, the political, you know, waves and temperatures and all that are actually in themselves creating very strong young people. Right. Um, and it's also usually at the same time that there is that discrepancy that it has made very strong people and equally right. there will be people that will be left, you know, waiting for I, I am not one person that believes in uh, you know, waiting for government support. Why? Because the government will always allege that it has its own projects to do and right. all that. So these other things will be by the side. Right. And uh, at times when the government will say that they don't have money, they will tell you their priorities will be the projects and the manifesto and all those things that they pledge to the people. Right. So young people in this sense um, would do a lot of justice to themselves to just begin from where they are. Mm -hmm. I remember, you know, in my undergrad, we had a few young people, and I remember we challenged ourselves, and we said, let's try a few things here and there. Uh, some of us, we began by selling, you know, watches, you know, and we'd right. make some little money there, and we kept increasing. I remember the others who decided, Let, let's go and wash the, the you know, the, the cars, the lecturers' cars. Others tried, let's wash the roofs and all that. So there, there are a few things there. Others would take, you know, in, in the campuses, there are small businesses, there are shops there. Others would lobby together, they would, uh, you know, find some money, begin some business there. Others would sell clothes, others would, you know. Th there are a lot of opportunities. Why? Because I remember one of the people, one of my mentors told me something very profound. So, said to me, how many students you have in campus? And I said, there are thousands of them. He said, how can you generate an idea that generates just one shilling a day from all those students? And I think that's something I would want to challenge our, our students today. There are so many of the students in college, and those students keep spending money, including the one that is given by the um, higher loans, you know, <laughs> help, uh, yeah. you know, help. Which has delayed this time. Yeah, the <laughs> <laughs> and the comrade is suffering. I saw yesterday in the news outlets, yeah. people are crying yeah. out loud. Yeah. 
All right. Yeah. But 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 um, you see, like I said, it's tough times that make strong people. Okay. So in times like these, when now, because sometimes Brian, if you have your money coming in every other time, you may mm. never know how to really navigate when it delays a little. Right. But now that it's delayed, it's, I think it's challenging. It's, it's a challenge. It's that, a challenge, you know, yeah, that, that, that students need to take like up. It's like wake up yeah. and find another I mean, solution. Yeah. Yeah. So what but happens, now what happens to, before you continue, what happens to this student mm -hmm. who doesn't have any other means? Like the, you know, they told them, where under Shule Utapewa help? Yeah. And that was it from the Guardian or the support system. How are they surviving now? <laughs> I, I think, I don't know how, but such students usually, some of them are very brilliant. All right. They just know how to navigate through. They will, they will survive on arms for a few days, but right. they will discover an idea. I, I right. remember there are many young, especially ladies that I saw, that they would gather themselves and they would say, we will be washing clothes. And they right. would do washing clothes. You know, people would always wear clothes. Which is unexpected of a student. Yes. Because you know, you've been sent to campus yeah. to study mm -hmm. and not to do shoddy jobs yeah. to earn a living yeah. as initially yeah. presupposed to be. Yeah. Exactly. But, but you see, Brian, we don't choose our battles. You know, right. it's not, truly it's not uh, uh, the student's fault to have been born in a family where they are not very well up. Right. But the fact that they have actually managed to come the far of being in a university setting right. means they have tried to conquer a number of storms. Exactly. So it's just in that place that they are able now to discover there are things, there are opportunities. Yeah. But there any place where there are people, there are opportunities. That's exactly. right. So mm -hmm. it's just a matter of the, the students just discovering what opportunity can I explore that yeah. will give me not so much because again there is that um, you know presumption that uh, I, I will be wealthy in a day or two or you know yeah. you know we, we you have can to kill wash that. wash very fast <laughs> yeah so it's it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's gradual it's gradual yeah. right. you are able to meet a few needs today tomorrow you can meet a few more the other yeah. day and so on and so on so by so doing you realize someone is actually even opening up their minds because right. if i gave you that amount of money most of them will be given arms by even government and politicians and right. in a little while there is no money there right. why because their minds you see we we can only uh manifest to the degree that our minds have actually grown so yeah. if you give someone a lot of money and their minds has not grown to the level they can handle that level of of money yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. they will just waste it up You've yeah. seen many of them betting and then they win millions of money and yeah. then they are brought back to the same media in maybe a few months and they have they are nothing. They dead broke. Yeah. Maybe to interject, yeah. Brian. Yeah, please, yeah. please, please do. As much as we're saying that yeah. uh, sometimes students can be cunning on how they utilize that money, mm -hmm. comrades really need help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Honestly speaking, mm -hmm. we have a genuine number of students who are in need of help. Mm -hmm. okay. Giving myself as an example, mm -hmm. if it were not for help, mm -hmm. I think I would not have started from first year to for the year. Mm -hmm. I've never spent not even a single coin of my help even to purchase a mutura mm -hmm. because uh, I know. Where do you spend it? On fees? On, on fees. fees. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Entirely? Entirely. Okay. So we have a genuine number of needy students. So it is unfortunate when um, we try to say that um, as much as students uh, struggle that that uh, um, they are not entitled to it. I think it is tax, uh, taxpayers' money. And you, I think you saw during the campaigns period, many people trying to use it as a trap net to capture the attention of the young people to vote for them. Right. Actually indicating that... Which it side was vocal about this? Of, for example, the, 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 the recurrent Kenya Kwanza government, I remember the, uh, the actually promised that it will be a grant. Okay. Mm. You remember? Mm. I remember the Azimio team, they were saying that it would be made um, after, it would, it, would, uh, it would be made seven years. Yeah, so that you, uh, when you've consumed, you yeah. can pay like after yeah. you've gotten a job yeah. mm -hmm. and employed. So and you see, even the settled. politicians know that this is a weak link for, yeah. the, for, for the young people. To entice them. To entice them. Okay. And at the end of the day, sometimes they, they disappoint us. So they disappointed right. already. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, um, right. A week ago, I was told uh, I, 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 they came. They, they released the money after a lot of pressure from the students. I remember mm -hmm. we from Kuso and to actually go and um, hold some peaceful demonstration outside uh, help offices and right. facility towers so that they would listen to us. So I would like to put it clear that help is helping students. Mm. Let us not try to make it a favor. It is a right for the students. I can attest to you, these Koinama menans that, you can, that you're hearing, last week, I think, 
as much as we are talking about um, those that will, of course, use the money in cunning ways and so on, others will not even let the, the parents know about it. Yeah. But it has really helped students. Um, last week, um, I saw students calling me for lunch yeah. for some chicken. Yeah. Because the, the, they realized that I used my money for school fee. <laughs> right. And mm. maybe I, end some, I spent some time without lunch. Okay, right. they help each other. They they help other students at the yeah. same time. But again, for the for those that are conscious about how that money can help them, yeah. they use it in the right way to pay for their school fee. Yeah. How much is that money, by the way? You know, I'm expecting it should be like uh, fifty thousand and is, above. It is negligible, <laughs> my friend. It is negligible. All right. F just fifty twenty thousand. Twenty thousand. It is negligible. Right. It is negligible. We actually would like to make a plea to the government. Consider increasing that money. The to what amount exactly? To at least 50,000 at least. So that you are able to cater for your accommodation, you are able to cater Has for your school Has it reduced? Fee. Like from initially? No, no, no. It, you know they promised that it would be increased. Right. I remember the president uh, promising us that this money would be increased and we would even at some point make it a grant. Right. So our plea is please consider increasing the money. Even if you're not going to make it a grant because we understand that we are in tough economic times consider increasing that money so that we're able to accommodate more students within our universities. Yesterday, I was surprised when I saw that the school fees will be increased according to the... Um, to the... To the background uh, of, the, the, of the, the student? The, the, the Presidential Working Committee on uh, Education Reforms. Okay. Uh -huh. That the university fee will be increased. All I right. think that is not a very wise decision. That is actually chasing away students from accessing the very basic education that right. we need so that we transform our society. Because without education, if we make it a very expensive affair, then right. we, are, we are actually digressing, we are not progressing. There's also that issue before you interject that uh, if you come from a, a wealthy background, you should not get funding. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, it was pointed out and it created, it created a lot of you know, debate on that. We'll talk about that as well. <laughs> yes, I wanna. I, I think, just to echo what my brother said, it's, it's important the government really, you know, appreciates that, um, that gap. Okay. Especially because young people um, make, we would say, 70% of the population. Right. So taking care of the grievances of the young people it's, um, should be top priority even in the government. And um, I would say personally, I benefited from help. Uh, maybe I was not paying fees entirely. Yeah. But it helped me in a way, you know, just to ensure that I don't enamor in, in my no. type. <laughs> but um, I, I really feel for those students who have, you know, no resource coming from maybe their home places or their gardens and all that, because those ones are entirely depending on that money. Right. And if it doesn't come through, you know, that student may have their, you know, their dreams they may, de let's not say doomed, but possibly delayed, you see. Uh, and, and that's why it's very important for the government to really consider. Of course, there are many students. I, I saw something yesterday, I think, in the news. They were saying that they would increase the amount from 16000 to around 52000 yeah. I'm not sure whether that's pegged or now the increment in uh, the fees structure, right. or it is just, you know, constant. But I think, like you said, well, for those who are, because all these things will always happen, there would be an increment possibly of the, the help or the fees and all that. If, for example, the help is, uh, you know, increased, there would be students who would take that as an advantage. I have this amount of fees to pay. I have this for my bills. The rest of it, I can actually invest it somewhere. Because remember, it's actually a, a loan. And you love yeah. to pay. And, you're and uh, yeah. you know, yeah. especially well, in Kenya, years, you know, yeah. <laughs> in Kenya, we have a very poor, you know, loan repayment culture where right. we just borrow money and then after you we default. Uh, yeah we default yeah. Right. we actually even discard the lines we i mean we, we just thinking they'll it. not trace yeah. you <laughs> yeah in fact you they'll even trace your kids yeah, to pay you know them. they'll yeah. trace you and you know yeah. we, would say, we would say that the remedy of a loan is always just to repay it exactly. so I, I think as students also it's good by the way that we are speaking to young people because it's good to since we are talking about the mindsets it's important yeah. for young people to know you know when you get that money have it in your mind that you need to pay up the money. And that's right. why you actually need to spend it wisely. You know, for yeah. money that you spend well, you don't really struggle to repay it. As opposed yeah. to when you just got money and you just, 
you know, wasted it. Yeah, spending, you, yeah know? you know. So I think uh, that has to be the narrative. Let students get the money, but let them learn to spend it the right way. For those yeah. that need to pay fees, those that need, there are some of them who gather the money and they will invest. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and after some time, by the time they are finishing in fourth year, they have actually they money. Have a huge return. I met someone. Oh, yeah. They had just finished their form, uh, their, their fourth year. They would gathered all the money they borrowed, and they took it to hell. Wow. They said, "Yeah, Repaid this is the money. Yeah, they back. cleared it. In fact, they wow. took the principal. They said, this is the money you gave me. You really assisted me. This right. is your money back.' Help said, "You don't even have to pay the interest. We have not seen this before." Wow. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, so, so. Very I, different. Yeah, yeah, I mean. So it's right. good to inculcate such kind of, you know... Mindset yeah, and culture. Yeah, mindset, culture, morals. All right. Yeah. But then I think it also trickles down from your relationship with money. <laughs> you know, uh, there's that thing that they say, the poverty mindset. Yeah. You've yeah. never held quite mm -hmm. such a huge mm -hmm. amount of money. It's mm -hmm. your first time. Yeah. And you're not even taught about money dynamics, mm -hmm. uh, how to interact with money, have yeah. a relationship with money. So when you get your first big amount of money... Mm -hmm. First of all, you, in fact, what you have in your mind is yeah. bigger than what you have exactly. to spend with the mm -hmm. money. So I, I think this is a good conversation <laughs> we are having right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And allow us to switch gears. Yeah. Uh, you want to interject before we switch gears? It's okay. Uh, so mm -hmm. then maybe you'll tell us towards the end. Mm -hmm. So I want us to talk about matters, politics. Mm -hmm. uh, let's switch gears, Kidog, away from youth. Mm -hmm. uh, let's get to what's uh, <coughs> shaping the news headlines right now in the country. Of course, mm -hmm. last week we saw uh, the national prayer service that was held uh, in regards to intercede for the country mm -hmm. in terms of matters in security, mm -hmm. uh, the drought crisis situation. Mm -hmm. uh, yesterday we saw a lot of, uh, in the New Southwest as well, we saw uh, security uh, uh, security, uh, security issues, yeah. issues again being uh, pointed out in the northern region. We yeah. saw uh, the GSU police officers being deployed mm -hmm. uh, in, in the northern region to curb security yeah. and banditry, mm -hmm. which has, uh, I think in today's paper, they're saying it has increased as compared to even the two previous years before. When it comes to even uh, security reforms, and it started right here in Nairobi, where you couldn't walk in town with your yeah. phone. I remember from yeah. last year up to yeah. early this year, yeah. they had yeah. to deploy the NPR yeah. yes. to actually help out. Yeah to curb, you know, theft mm -hmm. and people being mugged left, right and center. What do you think uh, this current government is going to do or should do? Mm -hmm. And from a young people's mindset and opinion that they can do to alleviate completely matters in security so that they can become an issue of the past. Okay. The first thing um, I would say, anytime there is an economic turbulence, there would always be a lot of criminality. Um, usually because, you know, people are used to um, a certain way of living, and suddenly it's changed. Now, for example, the amount of money that I had cannot afford the things that could afford for me before. So some of them would now deviate their moralities and begin to now develop a longer hand. They have to pick a few things here and there, like now what you just said. But um, I think the first point of call, especially for the government, because all these things are actually just trickling down to criminalities and all that. The banditry, the, you know, people are trying to really um, navigate how then can we balance life when it's this, you know, tough. Uh, so the first point of call, um, for me, I would say the government would, to, would be to work on stabilizing the cost of living. Right. That's very important. Why? Because now um, that influences every other thing, you see, because um, people are governed by wants. And wants, we say in business, they are insatiable. So the fact that I have the, the amount of money that I have, maybe from my business or my, my, my salary and all that, that I get every other day, every other month, and I need to meet certain irreducible uh, demands, you know, means that I really have to do what I have to do. To ensure that I meet those needs, there are right. possibly school, uh, schools. There are, you know, there are daily demands of, you know, going to work, eating, and all that. So, uh, you know, paying for where I stay and all that. So the first thing I would say the government needs to do, of course, is to stabilize the cost of living. That's very important. Then number two, there has to be a more, of, um, I would say, um, inclusive kind of um, approach to issues where the government does not just, um, you know, just do it, but there is, th th they call it public uh, participation, where, you know, a few, and, and, and I would say more youth, because now they are forming the bigger part of actually all these issues, are involved to, you know, how then can we address this issue? Because most of these issues will be better addressed case by case. Right. For example, the banditry in Isiolo would be quite different from maybe the one in Pokot. And Wajir. Yeah, and Wajir, you yeah. see? 
Yeah. So it's better when you address it case by case. The people that are within that area will tell you, okay, so what, what, what exactly can we do about this issue? And, you know, in all this, there are people that have actually solutions on all these things. Yeah. So I think that public participation, more inclusivity of the young people, it really helped to solve most of these problems. All right, great. Yeah. We saw uh, uh, Interior CS Kendiki pitching camp still. He goes, in fact, the president called him out and said, yeah. in fact, uh, leave where you... Ondoka when you own issue, and I wish you to it there. is like pitch tent <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Come back when uh, mm -hmm. all Everything is security settled. is settled. Mm -hmm. But it, it happens that if he leaves a place mm -hmm. two days later, mm -hmm. there's a bandit mm -hmm. attack. Mm -hmm. Three people killed, mm -hmm. more than three people killed. Mm -hmm. Livestock has already disappeared. Do you think uh, it, it's like uh, some sort of like mockery situation going on, or it's like an intentional attack on the system? I think for me, it's more of. Um, uh, well, I may not affirm, but, uh, you know, we saw this by the former regional commissioner, um, uh, the governor now of, uh, uh, is it Tanzania or Washington Gishu? Mm. Uh, that is Natembea. Yes, Natembea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he said that uh, much of it is actually people within the government that are actually trying to, you know, work this out. We yeah. may not, uh, you know, qualify that because we do not know. Uh, because Singh was re recently attached to the sum. Yeah. 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 So I think there has to be, because any time you need to deal with a problem, deal with the root cause. Right. They have to get the root cause. What exactly or who are exactly behind this banditry thing? Because, yeah. you know, it doesn't make sense. You go, you spend a lot of resources, uh, pitch in a place, you know, deal with the issue. Two days later, the people just prove you just wasted your time, you know. Right. It doesn't make sense. Efforts proved future. Yeah, you know I mean, so we have to really, and I think that's why possibly now the government would need to use its intelligence. They say that Mkono has a recall in Imref. So now we have to see that long hand. We have to like, dig <laughs> deeper. To really yeah. dig deeper. So you think the deployment of the officers is going to turn it down? I think it will. Because just... the communities complain, those, those that complain, they're going to hurt them. In fact, yeah. those areas that uh, a curfew rather mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. issued to just turn it down. Yeah. And they said it's going to affect their businesses. So yes. I don't know. Well, is uh, it going to work? Uh, it may work to a certain extent. But then let's also know that's a temporary you know, uh, measure to curb the problem. Right. If truly we are looking at, because there has to be posterity when we are dealing with problems. We have to look at the future, not just the present. Right. The present is just a way to ensure that there is peace and there is, uh, you know, sort of um, um, stability. But then there has to be that posterity of what then happens 10 years later. Because I believe right. every government that, uh, because uh, I think we'll be getting to that, but every government that should be celebrated is a government that looks into the future of after them exiting office. All right. Maybe so, something. yeah, so there has to be that, that posterity of looking into the, the near future. Did we really deal with, uh, you know, this menace for once and for all? And many other underlying issues. Yeah, and, that and other underlining issues. Pushed under the rug. Yes, exactly. Because right. that is what is actually eating us. There are a lot right. of things, possibly the people that were in position at the time didn't yeah. really consider certain things. And now they have grown like roots. Now yeah. they, they are They're just mushrooming yeah, up. Exactly. <laughs> yes, Henry, echo this. I, I think uh, to echo what my brother is saying here, mm -hmm. we must admit that we are in tough economic times. And we say that um, resources are scarce. Whatever is happening in the northeastern part of Kenya is actually a scramble for resources. Right. And you know, a proper government is measured by its ability to protect the lives of its citizens. Mm -hmm. So we have seen this um, for, for decades, this issue, whenever we get to such natural disasters of, for example, anger and so on, uh, pastoralist communities will always come there fighting for the um, limited um, uh, areas, uh, grazing areas, and even the, the water. No. Um, first, I would like to applaud the government for realizing that, yes, we are in uh, a tough economic time, and we have to protect our people because these bandits are very inhuman. No. Because there's no point of killing someone if you really right. want to, to, to get the aketo. Right. Or even, uh, even if you want to get the, the grazing zones. Again, we have heard about commercialization, commercialization of these areas, of this um, 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 tough time by some greedy politicians who want to take advantage of whatever is happening and maybe steal these kettles, you see? 
So for me, I really want to applaud the government initiative to actually disarm. You know, the disarmament um, process is not a simple process. Right. We have seen policemen being killed by these bandits. You know, these people, they are well vast. Several, yeah, like they are well vast. Yeah. They are well vast with their environment. Right. We have new police officers being deployed there. They have not been in those areas. Right. But now with entry of uh, KDF, I think it will really help in curbing up that menace. Right. But again, this, the, the government must really rise, rise into occasion and try to help on the issues of economic crisis that we are encountering. Right. As much as we, we are encouraging prayers and so on and so forth, I think, again, we have to really dig into issues by actually providing the, what, it, what, what it takes for people to be at least okay in terms of economics and maybe to rely, for the, to, rely, to rely themselves. I was very impressed with the government initiative to wipe out the, uh, the robbery that and actually started rising in the, within the city. Yeah, you remember People archives, and, archives, yeah. archives, and been rebuilt. Yeah, as whenever you as a red spot. <laughs> yes, <laughs> for us who are living in within Nairobi, mm. uh, we, we we were walking with our uh, stomachs held. <laughs> mm. uh, your cell phone, you <laughs> may shake very tight. tight. You don't yeah. want anyone to walk behind you for a long yeah. time. You know, like, it, stop it walking tough. behind. Mm? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I saw someone. Mm -hmm. I saw someone getting actually snubbed. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And the phone mugged. Mm. It, it was terrible because I could not help. Because yeah. after that, I felt so bad. Because I'm not even sure who is this person yeah. and what crude weapon yeah. they have. And I just felt, you know? I felt like I was the next. Yeah. <laughs> right. So you had to run yeah. away. So, so I think the government is doing a good thing. Mm. Okay. We, we should all support yeah. the government right. in uh, matters of security. Matters security. Mm. And right. again, let the government be inclusive. Because again, with the ongoing um, national rallies by Azimio, mm. they will actually wasn't the situation okay. because people will continue uh, with, so? with the rise you of think politics the rallies yeah. are going to yeah with the rise like of make the situation more tensed up yeah with the rise of political heat okay now some people will take advantage of that to right. actually cause mayhem to cause the insecurity mm -hmm. yeah so as much as the government so what would you advise them to stop holding the rallies of course i know they are up for a cause Right. With, with the <laughs> You'll talk about that <laughs> yeah. cause as well towards the end. But, but again, uh, right. if the government is really genuine in fighting and uh, in uniting the country, let us stop seeing um, divisive um, Politics, political right. statements. Mm. Yeah. Let us try to be inclusive. Let the presidency take up the mantle and unite the country. Yeah. Because without unity, then um, such insecurities um, we continue rising and rising and rising. But they've also been constant on the, in their sentiments. They've, they've said they don't recognize him as the president. In fact, Juicy, they said uh, they're going to give out the whole <laughs> entire information of who they think is the president, what transpired, etc. <laughs> they had this uh, whistleblower giving out these mm -hmm. receipts as well. <laughs> and then also when, uh, when the president called, there's some, there's some members from Jubilee and also from Azimio who went to State House to mm -hmm. meet uh, the president mm -hmm. to talk about matters development. We mm -hmm. saw Jalas. Mm -hmm. And then when they held their meeting in, in I think it should have been in, in Machakos. Yeah, yes. Was um, him. yeah, he was kicked out. And then uh, the sentiments online were like, if you want to promote unity, then yeah. why are you holding some people yeah. you know, hostage yeah. for their political affiliations? Yeah. And yet the yeah. current government at hand yeah. is welcoming them on the table to yeah. talk about progress. And they are like, we disown you, you're not part of us if you want to speak to the mm -hmm. president. Mm -hmm. And yet mm -hmm. he is the president of the yeah. country yeah. and everyone else <laughs> must be under him. So mm -hmm. the questions are now, how are you guys going to get help if mm -hmm. you don't recognize this guy yeah. as the president of this country mm -hmm. and yet you're also a citizen mm -hmm. of the same country? I, I think, I think the problem we have with the Azimio team is the fact that they are really double speaking. They are somehow trying to be hypocritical, if I may call it. Because there's, there's no way, we know that elections are past us. They are long gone. Mm. <laughs> we don't need to think about posterity. Yeah. We need to think about development. Mm. I don't see the offense when a member of parliament mm -hmm. takes an initiative to go and talk matters of development with the government of the day. You know, these people are claiming that the, the uh, victory was taken. That's, those are claims. But 
now we will live in those murky waters of disbelief, um, discontent, until when? I yeah. think it is time for us to accept and move on. Because the, the, the rallies they are holding will continue to make us retrogressive. Right. When you look at some members of parliament from the opposition side visiting the, par the, the, the state house, you have seen others even make recognizing the president. Mm. Right. And then again, they, 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 they double speak. That right. So I think the, the Azimio have a certain um, objective that they, was, they want to meet, maybe probably a handshake. But right. again, which the other side said that can only happen in the worst nightmare, not even on earth, yeah. maybe in hell, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, all, uh, uh, all in all, as much as um, the, we would like to have it, of course, for posterity and development, we like to have Do it. Do you feel like but uh, the, the way all these things should just end up in a handshake? Uh, these guys should talk. But the other side, they've said they should, they should consider themselves as opposition. So opposition has no chance to talk I, to I the I think I'll go by what government. the president is trying to promote. Uh -huh. They should Independence themselves of institutions as opposition. Mm -hmm. okay. And a strong opposition that will keep the government to check. Okay. Because there's no need of us having um, collaboration of, uh, of the government and the opposition. Just like right. we witnessed. It will be a mess just like we witnessed in the previous five years. Okay. Let us have a strong opposition. When there's no point of us beating around the bush, ca causing mayhems, six months after the elections, trying now to, to bring new evidence that again will be proven as out there. I right. think we need to mm -hmm. be honest with ourselves. I think um, the government should not be shaken. Let um, president, the president try to be inclusive as much as possible. Uh, let him focus. He should not be distracted. I think, again, whatever the opposition is doing is the, it's actually, they are doing their work, their work. It's just that we, they, are, they are doing it uh, overboard and uh, trying to capture the attention of the government. If the government is uh, really serious, they should not even be concerned about what the, the, the opposition is doing. They should right. just focus, deliver on the mandate to the citizens of Kenya and treat every citizen as an equal. Right. So that we include, we, we, we bring the aspect of inclusivity, and so that, uh, again, we are able to fight this economic crisis together. Right. I, I, pity, I pity the opposition because of the kind of moves that they are making. I think it is not wise, it is unwarranted, and it is actually a wastage of time. Because I don't think the president of the day will really listen or even pay attention to them. All right. <laughs> uh, be before you yeah. jump in on that one... Yeah. Um, do you feel like uh, they should just, uh, the, the, the reigning government should just keep quiet, ignore their sentiments? Because uh, the, it also relates to the issue of uh, each and every Sunday, of course, they're going to each and every religious gathering to retaliate and give their rebuttal. And uh, uh, there was a discussion last week in one of the outlets where they're saying, is the church now being used as a medium for political uh, leverage? And then there was, they, were, they also questioned that, you know, a lot of people now start losing faith in church. Mm -hmm. But then there was again another discussion. There's church and there's God. So who do you believe in and who is being used here? <coughs> is it God who is being used mm -hmm. or is it the church? Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to the reigning government, should they just ignore and move on? Mm -hmm. And then also yesterday, we had the deputy president who addressed uh, a, a religious gathering. <laughs> he was very vocal, and yeah. he is very vocal. Yeah. He said that he doesn't recognize anyone who is not supporting this yeah. current government. Yeah. And he said, mm -hmm. in fact, quote unquote, he said that our current government is a company, yeah. and it's only <laughs> going to favor those who support this yeah. company. So if you yeah. don't support, yeah. forget, yeah. go find somewhere yeah. else. Mm -hmm. You know, how is this going to turn out? Because I can only imagine how literally that means to the people on this other side. Yeah. Right. Well, I think, um, <laughs> you know, we have to really appreciate that we vote in a government. Um, and of course, there has to be a winner and there has to be a loser. Now, we are seeing a tug of war between the two. How be it that one, of course, is um, um, actually both of them. No, this won, this lost. Now, um, I would say that the, the issue with the opposition is a lot of, I would call it denial. Because um, if you lose and then you're, 
you know, you're still battling, you're saying we won. And, you know, after everything was done by the, you know, relevant institutions, including the, the commission, including the Supreme Court, you know, everything was declared that these are the ones who legally won and the reasons were given. And parties were, you know, invited to actually shake hands and, and agree that, yes, we actually accept because even before elections that was done. If you lost, would you really consent? And they said, yeah, we would. So I think we have a lot of denial. And uh, the fact that we don't have anything and any verifiable, you know, um, results to use to actually qualify what the opposition is saying means that we should just stick by what has been declared to, you know, uh, to be the winners. The, the government of the day took the day. And that's it. And I think more that um, we really need to change that narrative of Kenya being always political, you know, we, right. we, we are always, you know, we, we, now we look like we have another election in maybe a, a month or two, right. you know. It and sounds like even it's pre-election. Yeah, pre I mean, yeah, it's pre-election. Like, yeah. And, and I think that in itself really distorts even our functionality, our stability. Okay. Because now for, now that, uh, except that uh, we have, um, you know, that the, 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 the rally is now a bit stable. All right, so hold, hold your thought right there. Okay. We'll come back and uh, you'll continue the same okay. So we're okay. going to take a okay. very short break okay. and we'll come back to sum it up before we get to the next uh, segment. Stay right there. Why? Imagine. Yo, what's up, my people? Nick and Bradley's.